Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Arthur C. Clarke. Welcome to EOS Weekly. On Monday, March 11th, Bancor announced the Bancor Unified Wallet. This new wallet is incredibly powerful in that it enables you to hold any EOS based token and any Ethereum based token in the same wallet and convert any one token to any other token in a single click instantaneously. For example, you could convert IQ tokens, which are EOS based, into basic attention tokens, which are Ethereum based and then convert those basic attention tokens back over to say the main EOS token, and so on. Any combination will work. This is a major step forward towards the new tokenized version of the future that we are building with these blockchains. Converting one token into another is going to be a common everyday activity as tokens become more and more prevalent in the world around us. And the end user shouldn't need to know or care about what chain a given app is running on they're going to expect it to all just work seamlessly. When they perform these token conversions, they're going to expect it to be quick, easy, and free. And Bancor, with this new wallet, is showing us the way forward. Bancor is one of the few organizations out there with the background and technical expertise that is capable of offering a wallet of this caliber. It is their protocol, the Bancor protocol, that is behind the scenes empowering these instant conversions. The reason why it is challenging for other wallets or exchanges to provide instant conversions among all the niche tokens is due to the lack of liquidity. Most of the DAP tokens, like the ones highlighted here, are just getting started. So there isn't always a buyer for every seller, nor a seller for every buyer. This isn't as much of an issue for the base tokens like EOS and Ethereum. There are plenty of people out there buying and selling EOS and Ethereum. So matching buyers with sellers for these types of tokens is easier. But when it comes to the DAP tokens, most of them don't have a wide distribution yet. So there usually isn't a buyer for every seller, nor a seller for every buyer. So how is it possible that Bancor is able to pull off these instant conversions when there isn't always another person available on the other end of the trade? Knowing the level of liquidity on some of these tokens, and then going and using this wallet, it almost feels like you're trading with ghosts. In the remainder of this episode, we're going to look under the hood of this Bancor wallet in an attempt to find those ghosts and to better understand how this wallet and the underlying protocol works. We can dig into this fairly easily because the token conversions that are transpiring in the Bancor wallet are completely and totally transparent. Everything is on chain. This here is a high level view of what the Bancor engine looks like once you map it out. This is the EOS side of it anyway. There's a very similar structure built into the Ethereum blockchain, which we're not showing here. The Oracle up here transmits messages across chains, which makes the conversions between EOS and Ethereum possible. We're going to explain how all of this ties together so that hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand how the Bancor wallet and the underlying protocol works at the conceptual level. It's important to understand this for anyone who wants to stay current on blockchain technologies, because we're only going to hear more and more about the Bancor protocol going forward. You probably recall that it's this same Bancor protocol that powers our RAM market on the EOS chain. The RAM market doesn't use the same accounts that you see here. These accounts are used specifically for conversions involving the EOS token and the EOS DAP tokens, but the concepts are the same. As we move forward towards the tokenized economy, the use cases for the Bancor protocol will only be growing. For example, just a few weeks ago, Chintai announced a major upgrade coming soon where instead of empowering the lending of just EOS tokens, Chintai is going to expand to support the lending of any token. And Chintai is creating a new token called Chex, which is going to be the lifeblood of this new Chintai 2.0 upgrade. Now, we don't know how Chintai is going to match up buyers and sellers yet, but being that they will be supporting some niche tokens, it stands to reason that they will encounter some liquidity issues that will need to be addressed. It will be interesting to see if Chintai does end up using the Bancor protocol or if they go with some other approach. But once you understand how the Bancor protocol works, you'll begin to recognize these types of scenarios where it could be helpful for a given application to apply the Bancor protocol. For example, any app that creates a marketplace between buyer and seller could potentially benefit from it. So let's dive into this diagram now. 
as we study this, the best place to start is this layer of what they call relays. Basically, relays are like the ghosts in the machine that you're trading with when there's nobody else on the other end of a trade. Relays are what make it possible to trade any token anytime. And once you understand how these relays work, the rest of this structure here becomes pretty easy to understand. But in order to understand relays, instead of the ghosts analogy, the better way to truly understand these things is through a thought experiment that involves watermelons, or more specifically, watermelons and grapes. So stick with us while we talk about fruits for a second here, and we'll tie it back to tokens and relays in a minute. So the thought experiment goes like this. Imagine you had to find the fair market ratio of watermelons priced in terms of grapes. How many grapes equate to one watermelon? It's not one to one, right? Most people would agree you'd need at least 20 or 30 grapes to equal the value of a single watermelon. But if you couldn't look up the pricing anywhere and had to figure out the fair value on your own, how would you do it? Here's how Bancor solved this in a rather elegant way. Bancor suggested that if you were to set up a stand at a busy marketplace and you brought in a whole truckload of watermelons and a whole truckload of grapes, and anybody who came along with grapes could trade you for a watermelon, and anybody who came along with a watermelon could trade you for grapes. You are the simplest of merchants. Fiat money is never exchanged, just grapes for watermelons and watermelons for grapes. The only catch is this. The conversion rate is set by you, the merchant. And whenever someone comes along and trades with you, you will make a minor adjustment to the conversion ratio. For example, if you start the conversion rate at one watermelon for one grape, and someone comes along and gives you a grape and takes the watermelon, the conversion rate would change to two grapes per watermelon. So the next person would have to provide two grapes to get that watermelon which would again cause a change in the conversion rate, moving it up to three grapes per watermelon. Fast forward to when it gets to say 50 grapes per watermelon. And at this rate, it'll have gotten attractive enough for people to trade the other way. So somebody comes along with a watermelon and takes the 50 grapes. When this happens, the conversion ratio changes the other way, going back down to 49 grapes per watermelon. By implementing this very simple logic of adjusting the conversion ratio in a certain direction based on which of the two fruits are offered, your conversion ratio constantly adjusts towards the fair market ratio. This is what relays do. But instead of two fruits, a stand, and a merchant with a conversion rate, Bancor relays have two types of tokens, an account, and a smart contract. In EOS, relays are set up as accounts. This, for example, is the actual relay account for the Karma token. You can see that it has a balance of both Karma tokens as well as BNT tokens. Each of these relay accounts here have a similar arrangement of two tokens in them, like the Karma account you just saw. One of them being the BNT token, the Bancor network token, and the other is the DAP token, or the EOS token itself in this particular relay in the middle. But the logic for the EOS token works the same as any of the other relays. The DAP tokens and the EOS tokens are like the watermelons in each of these relays. The BNT tokens can be thought of as the grapes. Because the grapes exist across all of the relays, this means that in a two-step process, you can convert watermelon for grape and grape for watermelon, thereby converting any one of these tokens into any other. Let's go through a full example a bit slower now. Let's say this account here has Karma tokens, that they want to convert to higher vibes tokens. To do this, the Bancor wallet would send the Karma tokens up to the This Is Bancor account, along with a message that specifies the desired conversion. The smart contract in the account processes the message and sees that the first step is to send the Karma tokens up to the Karma relay here. The Karma tokens arrive at the Karma relay and are exchanged for the equivalent amount of BNT tokens. In the process, the conversion ratio of Karma to BNT changes slightly. Then, the relay processes the message and sends those BNT tokens back to the This Is Bancor account. The This Is Bancor smart contract knows from the updated message that the first step of the conversion is complete and that it's time to send those BNT tokens onward to the Higher Vibes relay, where the BNT tokens can be converted to Higher Vibes tokens. The conversion rate of Higher Vibes to BNT is, as always, updated during this transaction. Once this second conversion is complete, 
for the final transfer, those higher vibe tokens are sent directly to the originating account, completing the conversion process. Of course, to the end user of the Bancor wallet, all of this happens so quickly that it just appears instantaneous. As you saw from this example, the BNT tokens, which reside in all of the Relay accounts, serve as generic units of value that can easily move in and out of all the other Bancor Relays. Keep in mind that these Relays are not connected to some sort of price check API outside the chain. Relays are black boxes that operate totally independently of the outside world. And as you've seen from our example, Relays serve two purposes simultaneously. First, they serve as token reserves, so that there is always a supply of all the niche DAP tokens available for trade. And secondly, by pricing one token in terms of the other and having an intelligent pricing mechanism that adjusts the ratio with every trade, these relays stay in sync with the fair market value. Anytime the ratio gets out of sync with the real world prices of any of these tokens, arbitrage traders are there in the background watching for these types of imbalances who will quickly capitalize on any discrepancies, trading in the direction that yields a profit for themselves while at the same time bringing the ratio back to where it should be. If you want to learn more about the math behind the conversion ratio, please see the Bancor white paper and the other sources listed in the show notes. We definitely oversimplified the math a bit during our watermelon and grapes analogy. If you dig into the math, you'll see that it's impossible for the reserve token for any relay to ever be fully depleted. Now, one last but important scenario to cover is the cross-chain conversions. For example, converting higher vibes, which is on EOS, over to the basic attention token, which is on Ethereum. How is this done? It's a very similar process to the last example, with one little leap in the middle. So the first step is still the same, where the higher vibes token is converted to BNT. The higher vibes relay knows from the message, which includes the Ethereum address, that this is headed over to Ethereum. So as, instead of sending those BNT tokens back to the This Is Bancor account, the Higher Vibes Relay sends the BNT up to the Bancor X on EOS account. This is where the Oracle coordinates the transfer of BNT tokens back and forth across chains. We'll see the BNT tokens being both issued as well as burned or retired. The Oracle is coordinating this, burning on Ethereum and issuing here, or issuing here and burning on Ethereum. This is how Bancor ensures that the total number of BNT tokens remains constant during these cross-chain conversions. In our example of converting higher vibes to basic attention token, the BNT is burned here and issued on Ethereum. That BNT would then be directed to the relay for the basic attention token on the Ethereum chain, which would then convert the BNT to basic attention tokens and move the basic attention tokens to the Ethereum address in your Bancor Unified Wallet. The architecture of this is set up such that it's getting easier for Bancor to implement this structure on other chains. Watch for them to be expanding support over to EOSIO forks, such as Telos, or to other third-gen chains, such as Tron. The link to the Bancor wallet is in the show notes below if you want to try it out. It's web-based, so there's no need to download nor install anything. Bancor made it super easy to get started where you authenticate through SMS, Telegram, or Messenger, and Bancor creates the EOS account for you, free of charge, and gives you enough CPU and RAM to get started. That's it for this week's episode. Thank you for joining us and we hope you learned something. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We'll help you stay current on EOS as this revolution unfolds. Thanks, and we'll see you next week, right here on EOS Weekly.